Oh my God, Cole. This is going to be an epic video. Welcome out to the lake, guys. It is 104 degrees right now down here in Texas and it's the middle of the day. And while that might seem like about the most stagnant, disgusting, worst conditions anyone could ever fish in, it's actually the absolute best time to have this phenomenon that happens every single year down here in Texas. We are going to be fishing for schooling fish that are absolutely out of their minds the entire video. It's not going to be something where there's like, you know, one fish chasing a bait ball every once in a while or a group of fish kind of comes through. We are literally going to be surrounded in this main basin of this public lake out here by thousands of fish of all different sizes, up to double digit size. And we're not just gonna target them with little baits or just target them with big 10 inch baits. We're gonna throw one inch baits, 10 inch baits, everything in between. And I'm gonna run the live sonar as much as possible until my phone overheats. And so you guys can see exactly how these fish are reacting the entire day. I got like 20 rods on the front deck here that imitate a lot of these threadfin shad out here. And this is a phenomenon of late summer that happens all throughout the country, not just here in Texas, not just in the South. And it's just gonna make you a better fisherman out here, even if you don't have forward facing sonar. So strap in, a little bit later in the video, I think we're gonna kind of target some bigger fish. Specifically, we're probably only gonna cast the big ones right now. Let's see what these fish wanna eat, get dialed in on what presentation is best. And we're just gonna let the day take us where it freaking takes us. Let's have some damn fun. Really quick, before I hop into some of the baits we're gonna be using today, I gotta tell you guys about a really special thing we're doing right now to give back to some of you loyal MFers, only for viewers of the channel. It's not gonna be advertised anywhere else. It's only gonna be for you guys until they're all gone. For those of you looking at this right here, I know a lot of you know what it is already because thousands of you have purchased them. This is the four piece travel rod. We got one in the spinning with the 611 medium moderate spinning rod. You can probably do about every spinning rod technique under the sun, great all around rod. And we have the casting series, which is a 7.2 medium, heavy, moderate, fast. Again, I'm gonna throw a top water on it today. You can throw a jerk bait, you can throw a weightless stick bait, Texas rigs, you can do a ton of different things. Chatter bait, little crank bait, very, very versatile rods. They sell extremely well. They're $100 MSRP. Well, we wanna put a little bundle together to help you guys out and to uh, get some more product in your hands since it's freaking hot out here, it's August, and it's only loyal viewers watching at this point. So we created a little bundle that I'm gonna link at the top of the description that includes one of these travel rods, whichever, whichever the spinning or the casting, whatever one you guys want, and then everything that is in this sack for a crazy cheap price. So let's show you what's in this sack right here. We got a Gillikin color, that's my custom color for bluegill, curved finesse square bill. We've got this guy right here, which is the Munch, which is in Gillikin color, um, probably the most underrated crankbait that I need to throw more because it's incredible. Just a little more finessey style of the movement crankbait is how I kind of would describe it, shallow runner. What else we got, Cole? We got some worms, some Ned Fries. They, they asked me what worm or what soft plastic to put in. I said I wanted one that's probably the most versatile for all different situations. A black and blue little worm's gonna get bit anywhere you go in the country. Of course, we had to throw a topwater Gillikin Vega frog in there. That's my, my favorite color of the, the, the frog, the, the popping frog, of course. You know, it's a bluegill color. Can't go wrong with that. We got my favorite shallow crankbait for anywhere in the Midwest, in the North, in the East. Um, Gillikin Crush 50X Square Bill, six feet of cover, hard cover and less. It's, it's an absolute killer. And then I got some in my hand. I don't know why I'm standing here like this, but we got some terminal tackle. We got a pack of peg stoppers. We got some weights. We got some hooks that you can use for all your Texas rigs, but of course they would match up well with the Ned Fry as well. So I don't know what the retail price is for all this stuff, guys, but all of this that comes in this bundle, plus the rod right there, if you use my MF10 code, we are going to give it to you for about $98 is what that brings it to. So you're gonna get free shipping, 98 bucks, all this stuff. There's only a limited number of these rods left. We finally have the travel rods back in stock. So get out there, pick them up, and um, it's a rod I'm gonna use in this video to go throw some top water right now. So check them out if you want. Okay guys, I have a damn plethora of baits tied on here. Look, we got a hover juggle rig, which has become like my favorite sneaky little bait to throw for these fish. We got a little ice fishing sneak jig. We got a freaking provoke. This is that travel rod I was telling you guys about the four piece. It's perfect for a, I throw some braid on there. I throw this little splashback popper. We got some, a jig head minnow guy. We got a six cents catwalk. 
And then over here, I mean, we got like, we got five different types of swim baits on this side of the deck. Let's start small and go bigger. Kind of just see if the small baits are what they're dialed into. A lot of times, I mean, there's a good fish right there. You can see, look how many of those fish are out there. Those are all thread fin shad, those balls out there. And we got it set on about, not about, it's at 120 feet forward. So for those of you guys that are new to this, I mean, it might seem like we're in a dang aquarium out here where it's like, oh, you're just gonna cast out and catch one. And hopefully it gets to that point where they're so active that that's what we can do. But we're trying to fool fish that are eating so much of the real thing that sometimes they do get super dialed into uh, very lifelike presentations only. There's my bait falling right there, 40. That fish is on it pretty good. He doesn't seem super active, but that's probably with it on. Ooh, this guy's his buddy is very active and wants it. Let's see if he does it. Nope, he didn't. But if we look further out away, you guys can see a lot more better sized fish. Oh, that's a so that's a whole school of bass out there. How many bass are in that school? Those are all bass at the end. You guys can see the difference there between the ball of threadfin shad here between 25 and 45 feet of water and then that school of bass and the school of bass I'm having to turn the transducer because they're moving so quickly I mean that's a guaranteed catch we're going to throw this hover juggle in there it's sexy as hell and these guys are going to eat it hopefully it's a big one there looks like there's a couple better marks in there this wind is blasting today so hopefully you guys can hear anything I'm saying and uh, it's also making it really not fun to cast this 1 16th ounce bait more than you know 70 feet out there but let's get a good cast on this group of fish kind of spiraled on me they're running away from the boat look at that they're probably not scared of the boat they're probably just looking for bait yeah look at those guys you can see them blasting on the surface right out there there's a guy up there way towards the top let's get a good cast on this group going out away from the boat there there's my bait just landed there at 65 or sorry 55 feet and they all just lit up and it's in one's mouth right now probably nope they didn't eat it yep they did eat it it's in one's mouth look at the whole school falling them in too absolute craziness there goes my hover oh no that's a freaking bait fish right there i want to pick that bait fish up and show you guys this is just a little chuck he just spit this out though it's probably going to sink before i get to it we're going to try to grab it though quick little guy but let's see what he spit out Oh, it got away. Well, it was a little tiny one inch shad. And we actually, we got some dang baits that uh, look a little bit like those. So we're gonna, we're gonna mix some of those fun guys and try those as an experiment today as well. But hey, we're on the board. Hover juggle strikes again. For those of you guys that are new here, I love you. Thank you for tuning in. This is called a hover juggle. It's a weird guy. It's a six sense juggle minnow. Juggle minnow? Minnow with a nail weight in the front and usually i'll poke it about right there but as you guys can see that fish just wiggled like a crazy little guy and tossed it and so now we have a whole bunch of plastic that uh we got to go through but I, I make the keeper on this hook i've got tutorials on that and that's it basically you pop your slack and that thing just pulses and just looks like a damn snack out there is what it looks like so we got one on the hover juggle even though there was a damn school they didn't seem super super excited about that which tells me a couple things either the size of the bait or the rate of fall isn't right and this is not a fast falling bait with how i have it rigged right now with kind of a small to medium sized nail in there so we might need to put a faster falling bait down to them we might need to throw a bigger bait but it's just part of the experiment we're going to continue that was a terrible cast at a really solid fish actually there's a pretty good sized fish out there at 65 to 70 feet and he's kind of by himself. That does look like a really good one. Let's see if we can get him to bite. Did you see it? Yep, he turned around, he turned around guys. Look at it, he's coming in hot. Is he gonna close it? Sorry, the wind's blowing us so I'm trying to keep him in the beam. Oh, he's, he's thinking hard about it still but he does not act like he's gonna pull the trigger. Come on bud, do it. Do it. This is the nice thing about the hover juggle. I can just pop it in his dang face and tempt him with it. Did he just give up? I think he gave up. Oh no, he's still behind it. Look at him. Mix in some more aggressive pops and see if he freaking pulls the trigger. 
You always want to make that bait seem like it's going to get away from them, of course. Play some cat and mouse a little bit. I can see this fish right at the boat right here, but I don't want to make too many movements. Whew! He got away from us. That's all right. On to the next ones. You guys can see we got plenty more experiments out there, as I like to think of these fish. Not too fun to play those experiments in a tournament when you're seeing eight fish a day and they don't want to bite. But out here, as you can see, we're going to have a few opportunities to put it on some of these fish. And really, I mean, the majority of these fish are like the one that you guys just saw up to three pounds. But there are plenty of those six to eight pounders and a few bigger than that mixed in as well and you can really pick and choose which ones you're casting at oh god those fish came out of nowhere kind of going after this guy but you can really pick and choose which ones you cast at when you have this many opportunities it's not a day where you just you know are going to try to catch every fish that's in front of you hopefully we're gonna we might end up like that if these guys don't get super crunk on us but as you can see that one right out there there's two fish but that the one on the back side there it's kind of swimming away from us at 70 feet a little bit better fish for sure once again i might need to switch up to a different presentation that i can cast a little easier into this 15 ish mile an hour wind kind of missed him too we got a couple of fish coming in there from the distance 60 to 70 feet away they look like you know your typical two-ish pounders they're schooling over to our right hopefully we get an opportunity to show you guys some of the uh live scope topwater stuff which can be really really fun to see them coming up and eating a bait off the surface although they will do that you know with any bait let's get out there's a big fish out there at 85 feet i'm already thinking like we need to mix up our presentation because we've now been swerved a handful of times that doesn't mean we're done with it for the day it just means that this moment they don't want it that's why i keep so many rods on the deck let's see if we can get this guy to Come play a little bit. I don't know where my bait went. Not on him. Oh, we got a guy out there deeper or further. Oh, it's two guys. That's always been Cole's dream. All right. Uh, 48 feet away. Let's see if we can get this guy. Come on, bud. Come on, bud. Oh, we're going to blow up up there, huh? Oh, God. Look at that school of fish. Let's throw a top water at those dudes, see what they want that. I'm gonna throw this little, take my little travel rod. We're gonna throw that little splash back at this. I mean, how many fish are in that school? Like you can't even get to all of them. There's so many. I haven't made a cast with this reel in a minute. So chances that I can not screw this up are not great, but we're gonna try. Yep, it blew up and we didn't get to them and they're swimming away. This is actually, um, you don't see me throw a popper a lot, but this is a, a situation I really like this splashback popper because it walks and throws a lot of water, which is great for these fish that are keying in on spooked and injured bait fish out here in the open. All right, let's see if these fish will come up a little bit. God, they're moving so fast. They're moving to my right. Let's see if I can throw it over there if you guys can see. anyway or 87 maybe dang it caught my front hook definitely one thing you gotta watch when you're throwing braid on this top waters for sure trebled top waters come on bud i'm already thinking about throwing that glide bait to them seeing if that'll make one of these bigger ones want to eat there's two good sized ones out there. Windiest day of all time, of course. The guy's kind of falling, but way below. He's not super happy about it. All right, moving on our, with our experimentations. Cole, we're gonna kill that clip. There's a big one out there. Can't even see him now, because he's in it so much. In that ball of bait, yeah, you can see him now back behind it, of course. If they seriously get spooked by me. Damn it. Okay, 
come on up. That one's interested, but I think we need a bigger fish to throw at to eat this glide. Okay, there we go. That guy's on it, good, come get it, come get it. Oof. He said, nope. Look at those jokers out there. I think as we kind of move across the lake this way, I've seen a lot more schooling activity. We're gonna see more fish, but we wanna make sure that we're getting around these better quality ones because man some of these guys are freaking tiny like the first one we caught there's a whole school of them out there it's like some better ones in the front there 90 to 110 feet away i don't know if i can cast that far into the wind right now And we're out in the open so far, the water's not crazy clean, maybe three foot visibility here today. But you can see those fish blasting in here. But we're out in the open so much that you really wanna make a splash and have these fish see it on the, on the fall because I mean, there isn't really big bait fish out here. So you really need to get their attention and look at that, here they come hard. Oh my God, do it. Starting to think maybe that little ice jig might be the way to go. Well, I guess it's cool to see fish follow. It's like we like to say when we fish tournaments, you can't weigh in followers though. Let's see if we can get some of these big old bigs out here. He said, no, nope, not for me. It's a better fish on top out there. If it's just one, it's two. Let's keep moving. You know what, I'm throwing the ice jig right now. God, they're freaking crushing it. Eat it. Oh my God, they're still popping it. Just gotta crank in an ice jig. This ice jig's different. You guys will see how fast it falls, but that's really the, the draw of it is the reaction, really. That, and if you're fishing for fish that are really moving really fast, then you can put it on them obviously a lot faster, but. It doesn't work very well for individual fish, but for fish that are actively feeding, 
Oh my God, those guys are going crazy trying to get it. They're freaking schooling back there. Dang it, Cole. Yep, let's see if we can see the whole group of them. There they are. I'm gonna fire this ice jig a million feet out there. They're chasing, they're not eating, which is nice. Really? Oh, there we go. I got one of them that time. You can't pull it by that many of them and not get one to bite. I mean, look at that school, guys. That is insane. And they're not tiny. And they're not big, but two and a half, three pounder. He's not very full. If he was full, he'd be over three, but skinny guy. Look at that ice fishing jig. Weird. Let's see if they can get more in that group to bite again. Watch how fast this thing falls. And that's the way I like to fish it. You like to, you want to keep it up ahead of them, up above them, so they can kind of ambush it from below. But popping it above their head is the ticket usually. And if they're really being sneaky, like some of these guys will, just holding it there a lot of times will get a strike. God, look how many fish are in these schools. I don't think that's even the same one. Can't even see my bait, there's so many fish and I can't catch one. It's like one of them Instagram videos of like a crazy like fish feeding space and it's like, tag a buddy that couldn't even catch a fish here. Well, that was me right there. Okay, so we're still, you know, struggling to figure out which presentation they want. Hopefully it's just a timing deal. Let's get a jerk bait to them and see what they think about a jerk and jerk bait's good. I got on a ghost thread fin. This might be my favorite Texas color jerk bait to throw. It really, I mean around the country anywhere, but this is the silent version, so nice stealthy mode. It's a deep diver, which is probably good considering you know some of these fish are coming from 20 feet of water plus and we're out here in 28 so they will come up but good with a bait that has a small presence in the water without having any sounds to at least dive a hair deeper those guys came up on that thing hot and swerved it they're still chasing it right, let's try that guy out there Missed him. I think as the day goes on a little bit more too, we're gonna to start to see a lot of top water eruptions. Look at that group out there. That's all bass, guys. Let them a little bit. Whole school's gonna light up. Yeah, they're already lighting up, but will they eat it? Oh my gosh. A couple of them came out after it, but blow your dang mind how dialed into that little bait these guys get. Blow your mind, Cole. Okay. Oh, now you want to chase. They're about to go on the surface. Damn, it's blowing. All right. Swerve City. Bait's 
in at 80. They're pretty active on that jig head minnow. Yeah, oh, I had one. Just kind of pop it around above them. One of them's going to get it here. They're attacking it. Oh, come on, buds. He's still on it. He's still on it here at 20 feet. There's two of them. Dang it. Man, it's crazy there can be a group of that many bass. Those fuzz out there at 100 feet, 70 to 100 feet, there are all bass swimming away from us. They kind of give that fuzzy appearance. Okay, let's keep moving. Let's, uh, we need to stop casting at such smart ones. Get a couple of these guys out here on the surface. There's a better quality one maybe, a little bit at 70 feet. I can't cast or catch fish. It's going great. <laughs> There's a better one there at 60 feet. Oh, his buddies are gonna get to it first though. He did, went and got off the surface. Oh, he dropped it. That's okay, he was smaller. I want that big one down there. And he's gone. out there at 50 feet 45 is right behind my bait he's not gonna do it I don't think someone drop it down to this dude who looks bigger he apparently didn't see it There's a better fish there at 70 feet. Didn't want it. Why would he? Better one out there. A couple decent ones at 85 to 110. That one actually might be big. Oh, it's multiple. That looks like a gar. Let's catch it. I think it's two bass. It is two bass. Motherfuckers.
Little guys. Starting to get over here away from as many fish. Maybe we'll kind of start to get into some better ones. There's a giant bait ball right there. I saw a couple, there's one underneath it. There's a school of them out there. Look at that school. Not these ones here at 45 to 50. I'm talking about those ones way out there, 90, 100 feet away. There's actually some better ones mixed in the front there. Here they come, and one got it already. Not a big one, but a better one. We're growing. That one's got all his buds with him, of course. Jeez. Definitely a better fish. Hold strong and it'll not. There's an almost four pound fish, three and a half. Heck yeah, little jig head minnow. Nice one. You guys saw how many were in that group too. And hopefully you're really noticing too how smart these fish are. It's not just like, you know, everyone thinks of schooling fish. You just throw something and it's an eruption. You're gonna catch them like, yeah, Cole thinks that. He's got his hand raised, but it uh, it's, can be really tough when they get super dialed in. I'm going to try something fun now, Cole. I don't know how to fish these baits very effectively. It's a new little prototype bait that I'm not supposed to show you guys, so I'm going to show it to you. But um, I think I'm going to try to do sideways and pop it on a jig head like that just to see what uh, the reaction is like from the fish. And then we'll kind of try the right way, but I think this will make the tail wiggle a lot, you know. I had super glue in my pocket. I think that could be the ticket, though. That's how big a lot of these thread fin are. Unconventional, but unconventional is good these days, and it'll spiral in the fall with it sideways. It actually looks really good. Let's see what they think. All right, here we go again. Jig head minnow. Let's see if that's a little bit better. 40 feet up, 397,000 of them. One already got it. He's either giant or he just, uh, he's so mad. He doesn't even know he's hooked. He's just trying to take it away from his buds. Nobody knows. It's a mystery. Feels pretty heavy though. At least a pound. Man, I had some fun with this rod, throwing uh, spy bait on it out at the river for smallies. For those of you guys that watched that, I didn't break off a single spy bait. This might actually be a good one. Which is weird, because he was just in that group of a million. Oh yeah, good one. He's got deep, but this rod loads up so nice for so many different techniques. I mean, usually I would say it's good for a treble hook bait, like I did use it for, but this is the Team 6 7.4. Yeah, 7.4 medium light. It's kind of like my 7.4 medium light Melican. It might have a little bit more backbone and a little bit faster um, rod overall, but good for a ton of different finesse presentations. The old Minner. Got him again. Sweet. That's a good one. We're gonna keep on keeping on, folks. I'm starting to want to get only big ones. 55, 60 feet out, that's a big, that's a big er. I'm not gonna say it's like a 27 pound or anything, but it's at least 18. I'm just kidding. Let's see what he thinks though, there's my cricket. Cricket missed him. Cricket missed. He's now turned from us, so it's hard to tell. That's gonna go to him. Oh my freaking group of them out there. Might not be a group of bigs, but it is a big group. Mm-hmm. 
Here comes some of this nonsense. You guys see them all up there on the surface in that crazy? Probably better cast to them. Stop talking. Yeah, eat my cricket. Eat my cricket there, 20 feet. Got it. Goes my cricket. Goes my cricket. Another one. Ow, ow. Uh. My cricket fell off and I want to get it before it sunk. He's smaller than my cricket. Bait is destroyed. Let's try a little chopper guy. A little homemade variety. They pretty well just laughed at it. That was good. A couple followers. Wow. Just biggins everywhere out there. Look at that. Not biggins, maybe, but big group. Look at that school of them out there. My goodness. Missed them, of course, because I'm terrible at casting today. What rod? Oh, it's my light rod. That's why. Do it. These guys are too small for the chopper glide. We get around some dang quality. doing this. Little group of them out there. Let's see what they think. I was just thinking, I wonder how Nakanee she's been. And then I was like, I wonder if dude's still fishing the roadbed every day. Your uncle. Jay Pratt. Cool, don't put that in there. Idiot. No. Oh, it is a fish. He's coming straight up. I saw a bigger one on the scope though. There goes my cricket again. <laughs> this guy's fighting so weird. He's just like big and lanky. Comes straight up on that lank life. 
Come on. Quit it. Yay, fish. Dude, stop it. Jig head minnow has been the freaking deal so far. Of course, I haven't been fishing the hover juggle as much. I need to throw that in there, but I think they're getting more active. We're getting out away from the big schools of them, and the individuals seem to be bigger and easier to catch, so we're going to try that. Those look pretty good. Do it. Do it. Ah. There's a grass pig. No. Ooh, that's a big one. He's not gonna kind of get it. That's a good one. Come on up. Come on up. Do it. Oh my. Big swerve. Big swerve. There's another good one. Come on, bud. Too much glare. So it's probably a timing deal with these guys. It's not even one o'clock yet. And it kind of seems like with these schooling fish, they just get dumber and dumber as the day goes on. A lot of times to where they're biting best before night even. But um, they're, they're really temperamental right now. And the only couple ways you can get them to bite are with that little ice jig, which is really a reaction strike. and. I mean, this fish do see a lot of baits, especially 
this time of year because anyone can come out and, and see them blowing up over the lake. But the, uh, the ice jig or this little jig head minnow, and you can fish a lot of different baits on this, but I mix it up between a few. My favorite still is probably this uh, the six inch juggle minnow, just because you guys can see how lively that thing is. It really has a nice flow to it. Sometimes they want the, the hover juggle. Sometimes they just want the straight jig head minnow, but the, the straight jig head minnow like we're fishing like this is a lot easier to cast when the wind's blowing hard like this. I know the waves aren't big or anything out here because it's not a very big lake. It's really protected, but it's extremely difficult to cast on some of these fish that are moving quick. So since your pole point is straight up, you can put it on them and get it to them a little bit more efficiently. We're gonna keep doing that. That's a good one. Maybe not. It's getting pretty, it's pretty wiggly. He splashed you, Cole. Take him in a derb. Come on. I know you ate it sideways. Beauty. Came up and got that little juggle on a jig head. I think this is a 316th, no, not 316th, 332nd jig head. Three and a quarter. That was cool. Good night. Got one on. The jig head juggle. Should we call it the jiggle? You like that? Very original. And uh, my jig head's gone now because it's, the guy swam away with it. <laughs> cool, cool catch though. What the? F That's a bass. He just swam away from it. Didn't even look at it. Some kind of a sick joke. Must be a carp or something. Carper. I haven't caught one big one today. Balzania? Balzania, Hitch. Balls off ya! Damn donk here. This is one of them showing up big ones. I don't think it's a giant one, but it's bigger than what we've been catching. That's for dang sure. Two pounds. They are tough right now. We're going to catch them anyway. I'm on scope at least. That was cool, right? No? Okay. Sweet. Get my phone wet at least. There we go. Activity level is increasing.
he said, hello, I will eat you now and I will steal you from my friend and be not big, but fight hard in the engine. Hey, and pull this pole in too, why not? I got two, I got two. Oh, he got away. I lost one of them, but I still got one, Cole. Dude, that's an effective little lure right there. I like to make lures. I like to make fish look like they're about 17 pounds when they're two. Because I'm a pro fisherman. Apparently you just got a fish on the part of the lake where it doesn't blow, as in the fishing. The wind definitely blows. Tip of the day, fish where it doesn't suck. This has been just a tip. Oh, they all want to engage in the bait now. <laughs> right in his mouth. Engage. Come engage with me. Oh, here we go. We got a school of them now, Cole. They're schooling in a school. Look at that. Wow, it's schooling activity. I can't even get my cricket to them because I'm too busy being tangled in my cricket. Wow, amazing nature. They're eating. Where is my cricket? Hey, stop looking at the scope and come eat my crick. Or not, that's cool too. Thank you so much for not playing. You were small anyway. Yoink. Wow. He's fighting hard. Was that one of my rods? <laughs> All bass, no bait. Here, I'm gonna swing it by 400 on this cast. Blowing. Ramming their little cricket heads into it. Oh, snagged his butthole. Jesus, I can feel him taking it freaking out of his mouth. Like, pecking. This guy's got a hell of a pecker on him. That was cool though, seeing them all freaking pinball it. Yeah, they're all spread out weird. Hmm. One pounder. Strap in the chair. So good at doing it the right way, you forgot how to do it the wrong way for a second. Whatever, Cole. I'm shitty at doing it the right way, too. Snap. Dude, it's not a big deal if it breaks off. These things are discontinued. Oh, 
Mm. 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 Pinballing it down there. No wonder everyone hates me. I don't blame you guys at all. That's why you don't cut the nose hook off, Cole. Hopefully you guys saw some of that. I don't know. He did. Kind of falls straight down like that too, so look how fat that fish is. Oh, that's a good one there that came up and got it. These are not active fish. It's pretty cool that you can trigger them with a bait like this. I mean, it's crazy too. It's, you're in Texas, like they don't know that it's like ice fishing even exists. It's weird that you can catch them on it. You don't agree? I agree. Whatever, just something I noticed. Bring in my ice rods next time. Oh! It's weird that they're like this when there's no shad around. Oh my God. Oh. Cole, if you fuck this up for us, I will kill you. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> that was rude. Watch your line. <laughs> was that, that was a different one. This is another one of those where it's like, ah, you named someone that wouldn't be able to catch one here, Cole. Uh, Cole, at Cole J. Thomas, or CJT Visuals. This is, that's who I would tag. I'm just never coming out. I don't even know where my cricket is. That's all right. I think it's in the water. Uh, yeah, if I don't catch one here, I never fish them again. Cole, you've said that for years, and you refuse to give it up. Stop embarrassing yourself. Oh, good, I got two prongs on my hook now. Uh-oh, we got a dubs. Told you it was hard to catch them. I need to put a new hook on my crick, but I'm not going to. Dude, it's like they're not even chasing shad. They're just here now. Best one of the day. Probably. Pretty good one. You freaking tangled my thing so I couldn't get back in there. Look at the fish all chasing them. I'm going to drop my cricket. Let's see if someone will eat my cricket while Cole's fighting his cricket. Oh. Dude, there's only 4,000 down there. That's a good one, Cole. What are you throwing? Oh my God. It's the jiggle. <laughs> I snagged one for a second on the way up because there's so many right here. Wallerin'. Come on. Oh, look at this. There's those, and then, oh, hi, everyone. Not even on bait, just out here swimming. Folks at home. Folks at home. Deal. It's a Folks good one. It's a good one, Cole. For you, especially. Uh, this is so weird how they're just out here. Dang, there's some big ones up there. That's a group of bigs. Group O bigs. Things are so much better than they were. Uh oh. I don't know if the big ones will eat this. I don't know where either of us are. Oh, okay. Dang it, Cole. Dirty f***ing cricket drifter guy. Yeah. That'll happen. 
Good job, Cole. Oh, I'm right here. I'm about to get eaten. What are you throwing, Cole? I should have freaking kept that. Jesus. No. I'm not taking your bait. I'm ice fishing. <laughs> that guy didn't think so. Oh, look at that big one down there. Oh, back on. That one is a big one for sure. About to be in one's grill, aren't you? There you using in your mouth, isn't it? Oh God! No, it was like, dong, 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 dong. <laughs> Freaking mean ones. At least I have a hook that's worth a shit on it now. So when they bite it, they get hooked. It's not always nice. Gulped it. Good job, dude. My bait's gone. That's how you know you picked the right color. It's also the only color I own. Wow. Amazing. Ice fishing in August. Wow. Ice fishing in Texas. Mm-hmm. It's the title of the video. So many. Dude, it's weird because they're not on anything and they're not really like bald. They're just right above the thermocline there. Yeah, I mean, it's hard to not have them get, get down to one. <laughs> just fighting over it and, and getting on them too. Look at that. Hopefully you guys are just watching this and liking it as much as Cole's is. They're trying to take it from him. I'm gonna drop my crick right down there. And they're gonna be like, oh my God, did that fall out of his mouth? I think I got you. You got one and I got my own? Double! Dude, afternoon bite. Oh, geez. Yeah, we got we got two on here, folks. Twin donkers. Twin donkers. All right, we got to hold on to these so I can show, send a picture to Osborne. Off. Deal. Wow. Active target, Captain. Dong. Dude, they're over here, you idiot. Wiggle. Mine's like. Ten, nine fish, but they don't want it. It's not as cool looking as yours, but it tricks them quicker. That one on top is a good one. I don't think the big ones eat this. I think you just get lucky with whatever can seize it. Hover drift, juggle, jig, ice. Fighting. Fighting over how stupid it looks. 
I gotta throw a big bait in there. Wish I had something that was faster sink. I'm trying to think what I could get over to them. I mean, it's dirty enough. They might eat a fucking line through. I like this rod. That's what you want. Yeah, really slingshot into them this way. <coughs> Cole's just out here moping. I thought you'd been at the house, but really you were up in Canada learning how to mope, and now you're dialed. Hmm. As soon as I get it down there, there are just no more big ones anywhere. They're also not interested in it. Jeez. I don't give a shit. Wherever. Cast where I fucking do, I guess. Except the gears will actually get there and catch them. I think so. It feels heavy, but they can fight like a some bitch. Yeah, I can't believe how hard these fish are biting today. They're fighting. One of those words. They are just not interested in the big bait today. Pretty good fish. Oh my god, I'm here. Oh, I got a hover juggle on? I'm an idiot. Can't do it. Too big. <laughs> Too heavy. Yeah, that'll happen. Hello. There's a largemouth bass that you caught right there. Good night. It was multiple though. Mm-hmm. Three, maybe, even. I like when they all are fucking like that, but... My knot got stuck for a second. Something. Hey, jig. Jover huggle. Look at that. So easy out here, you can catch them with a bear hook.
pretty big. Do it. Hmm. Still on it. Got him. I think I got the one. Looked like he fucking came through the other group of them and got it. Come on. Come on. Better. Dumb. Damn. That's the best one of the day. If he was thicker, he'd weigh more. Hover jugs. Let's just sell out more freaking jiggles. Cole's throwing a jiggle. I'm throwing a juggle. Ow. Just long and drawn out. Not that impressive, really, but cool nonetheless. We got back to our little group of these fish. You can probably see them on the screen right now that are just not even on bait. They're just out here. God dang, he's freaking got it. Oh, double jiggle fish, double jiggle fish. Take a picture of that with my camera I don't have. Can't see our jigs. Yahtzee. Good job. Yeah. You gotta point that scope at him. Yeah. <laughs> Cheating, you know. Ah, I should have fizzed him. It's a good one. Oh, my phone's recording, or my chest cam's recording at least. The scope wasn't. Just out here getting the best scope footage of the day, and I'm like, I'm checking my email. Wow. Cold scope. Cold scope jiggle. Mm-hmm, that'd be the best thing that he could do. Good and call. God and... Thank you. Guide picture. My first largemouth bass. Next week, we're going on a high fence hunt. <laughs> See what we can shoot around the feeder. Wow. Oh, my God. I came and got it right here. Yeah, no sh Judas Priest. Good one, too. Good frame. No. Oh. Yep. Hover juggle for the win. And jiggle for the win. You bet. 